How's it going people? Simon Slab here and as you can see we're doing a bit of branches of Darkmire as the Mortini task just come out. It's one of the actual requisites for hard and elite, so we may as well get it done. So let's have a little gander, see what the actual prerequisites are. So to do branches of Darkmire you need to have completed Legacy of Seagaze, the Legends quest, you need 63 agility, 76 woodcutting, 63 farming, 70 fletching. 64 crafting, 67 slayer and 70 magic. You'll also be needing to defeat the enemy boss which is 332. But the items you actually need for this, all you need is a hatchet. I do recommend bringing along your failure of Vandus and a main weapon in case you accidentally attack a vampire. Plus we will be killing some very low level mobs at one point in this quest. Some emergency food for the exactly same reason and an emergency teleport. So once you're ready, head down to Bird Rot and head into the pub's cellar and we need to be talking to Valaif Hertz. So go ahead and accept the quest. and tell him you'll go and now you want to exit the pub and we want to head just south behind the bank and you'll notice there's a little dungeon like on we're going to be heading down there And once you're in here, you want to turn your camera angle, and you'll notice a letter on the floor right next to you. Pick that up. You can read it if you want. And you'll find that it's actually a letter for Saflan. So while we're still in here, search the coffin. And you'll get a mysterious medallion. Later on, this will actually turn into Dragon's Medallion, and it's very handy. So I'd recommend it in your inventory throughout the entire quest. But once you've picked them up, you now want to head back in and talk to the leaf hurts. So back to the pub cellar. And go ahead and talk to the leaf. So we will offer to teleport you to Saflan, accept it, as it will save you a lot of time. And you'll be teleported straight into the Mayor Ditch hideout. So head up to the northern side, and we now need to talk to Saflan. So talk to Saflan, show him the letter and the medallion. and you'll take the medallion off your hands and enchant it for you. You can now teleport straight to the Mayor Ditch hideout with your mysterious medallion. Pretty handy. So tell him of course, and we now need to go meet up with a couple of more friends of Saflan's. So you want to head straight out, and up the stairs back into Mayadich. Go through the wall. And then up the stairs. You then want to jump to the western building. And climb down the stairs there. You want to X 
exit this building and head a little bit to your west and then go south into the building here you notice the right one is there's a fireplace in it with a ladder once you head up the ladder and you'll get a little scene with two vampires or via watch I should say So once they disappear, jump to the western building. And then you want to climb down the ladder. And now you can just see on your mini map the highlighted area. You want to head slightly north and there should be a little walkway in between the houses which you can then get in you notice the right house is there's a big white silver sickle sign on the wall and Vatida will be in that room so open the door to get in and talk to Vatida he'll then tell you to climb up so climb up the wall right next to him and Go ahead and talk to Matillus here. He'll then tell you to stand on the silver signal next to him, so click on that and you'll stand as a watch. And you'll get a little cutscene. So as soon as the cutscene's over, we now need to head down and talk to that little girl. So drop down the floorboards exactly where you jumped up. And then head through the southern exit of this house. And Nessie will be right by there. Conveniently a level 424 little girl. So just go through the options. And eventually you'll find out that she's actually Vinescular Dragon. So attack her once and she'll knock you back. And she'll also teleport your two little buddies away so just talk to her again. And run through all of her options. Some of them you will have to go through once or twice. A couple of times again like. But eventually Vinescular will give you a letter that you need to take to Savalan. So it does take a little while, just run through the options. And then eventually you'll get the option of why should I trust you. And as soon as you get that, say you'll listen for now then go through the remaining options and eventually she'll hand you the letter to take to Saflan so once you've got the letter you can't actually read it and all you need to do now is right click on your mysterious medallion teleport and head to the mayor ditch You'll appear in the hideout, just head north and talk to Saflan again. And hand over the letter. So once you've handed over the letter to Saflan, we now need to talk to Vatida. 
He's right next to Safalan. Ignore what I'm doing on video right now. I forgot to talk to him. So I'll head back now. So go ahead and talk to Batida. And he'll tell you a way to make your way into Darkmire, which is the vampire city. So once you finish talking to Batida, stick to the southwest side while you're in the hideout. And just before you come to the ladder, in the southwestern corner, search the crate and you should get 30 smoke bombs. You'll be needing these for this section, so make sure you pick them up. So as soon as you've got them, exit the hideout. You then want to push through the wall and back up the stairs again and jump to the western building and head back down the stairs. Now this time we're going in a different direction so you want to head north through the house directly in front of you and then you want to run all the way north as far as possible If you've done the Legacy of Seagaze, you know which way to go. So keep heading north, just click within your minimap and you'll make your way up there automatically. And eventually you'll get up to the very top near the mines and you'll see this little sewer entrance here. You want to squeeze, squeeze through the crate. And... Once you're on the other side, you're now in the Vampire City and you'll see Vinescula Dragon right next to you. So go ahead and talk to Vinescula. And run through the options. As she will offer you a needle and thread. Pick them up off her. As we will be needing it. And she'll tell you she can no longer help you through this part and recommend you find a disguise. So for this section we will be using the smoke bombs and it can get quite frustrating. So all you got to do is use your smoke bomb and run into the houses and search in the crates. Make sure you shut the doors behind you. As if any of the vampires or Viawatch spot you they will throw you back right next to Vinescula. But once you search the crates... You should find some broken pieces of vampire disguise. Just repair them with the thread. And again, use your smoke bomb and move to the next building. Make sure you shut the hope door there, uh, the door behind you every single time. And I'll say this now: be wary of Viawatch, as they can spot you almost instantly if you walk over them. Like that which can get quite annoying. So you can try to time your runs so you avoid the via watch as much as possible. There's four chests for us to search to get the full vampire disguise set. The first one, as you've already seen, is in this house right next to me. There's nothing in this second building here, but you do need to reach it as a checkpoint so we can reach the next one. And from here, you want to head almost directly east, and you'll see the building right in front of you. It's this one here. And then search these, and you should get another piece of eye watch. So fix them and re-equip it, and almost directly to your north is the next building we need to head to. Be wary of the Viewatch as there are a few running round. And you want to search these chests for your third piece. And that'll net you your boots, and the next building is almost directly to your east. So just head on through. 
And this is the final chest. So once you've got all four pieces, equip all of them. And the vampires will no longer bother you. So there's no more need for the smoke bombs. You can drop them now if you want. And we now need to head back and talk to Vanescular Dragon. So, go through the options with Vanescular. And she'll tell you that she can no longer protect you from the Viawatch now. And we now need to gain status within the Viawatch community to be able to access the tree we need to kill Dragon and Vanstrom. So, you want to head back up to where we just was, just stick to your northeast. Make sure you don't take any piece of this vampire disguise off, otherwise you will be attacked by Viawatch. And they won't stop attacking you until you leave the entire area. So, on this northwest you'll see a ramp of stairs going up, and all you need to do is talk to Sentinel Mortshade, which should be right up the top. And he'll ask you what your name is. You can only choose this once, so choose whichever you like and make up your vampire name. Now right next to him you'll see Sanguinus Varnus. Talk to him and he'll ask for some help. Agree to help him and he'll tell you to go and vandalize a couple of propaganda posters. So to do this head around the right hand side of this building and just on the back of it you'll see the first propaganda poster. It doesn't matter what you draw so you can choose whichever you feel. Head slightly west and at the next little intersection you'll notice another propaganda poster on the western building. So head up through again and head west and run all the way across here and you'll see another propaganda poster on the back of this building here. So now you want to head through the southwestern entrance and you'll notice it's got like a little overhang over it and just behind it is the fourth and final propaganda poster. And once you've vandalised all four of them, you then want to head back and talk to Sanguinus Varnus and tell him that you've done it. So you'll now gain a little bit of favour. You want to head west almost directly from where you talk to Sanguinus and eventually you'll come across Grigrin Canonis or Grigan Canonis and he'll ask you if you'll help out capturing six Bloodveld younglings these are located in different places for everybody but as you can see here this is what a Bloodveld youngling looks like it kinda looks like a little spider so just go ahead and pick that up we now need to find six of them. They can be on this tier and the southern tier where we actually found our disguise. But you won't find it past this point here and up the stairs. Do not try to go up the stairs just by here yet as we need to gain a lot more favour. And they will deal some hefty damage to you. So little tips to find these little blood welds is literally check every single little corner. So in between the houses, behind the houses. And eventually you will find them. So I'll speed this little bit up as I don't actually find any. But the route is exactly the same. 
you want to check all of the upper tier and then make your way down to the lower tier and eventually you should try and find them all as once you've gained all of them you will gain quite a bit of reputation which is nice so as you can see they're not exactly very easy to spot and this could take you quite a while but then again they could just be out in the open for you and you may just be lucky but doesn't matter for now keep an eye out for them as you do the next little few sections and you'll probably find them so once you've either found them all or you've just got the one like I have go ahead and talk to Grigrin and tell him you found however many you found you then want to head slightly to your west and you'll notice this building here you want to head inside and talk to this fella right by here Valentina and he will offer you some blood except make sure you've got full life before you do this as this will deal quite a hefty amount of damage so as soon as you're at full life drink the blood and you'll lose about 400 HP I think it was and eventually give him the response that you're used to a higher quality of blood and you'll gain a massive amount of reputation so as you can see I've just gained a new title the Via Grunt instead of the Via Youngling you then want to head all the way up to the northeastern side as we're now going to get a bit more of our reputation and eventually you will come across a building with a little prison cell right in the very northeast corner you want to head in there and talk to the guard here and he'll tell you to try and intimidate the prisoner so pretty much just be a bell end and rip the shit out of her and you'll gain some more rank if you feel like saving Maria later on you can only do this little option twice I think it is before she refuses to leave later on but as I don't really care I'm going to abuse her quite a few times and as you can see I just found another blood veld and I actually ended up finding the rest of them while I was here so if like me you've only annoyed her twice at the moment it's time to look for the blood veld so I've got all of them on video of where I found them they'll be in different places for everybody as these things can and do wander around so good luck finding them you will find them in the houses as you can see but they'll also be in between the buildings and stuff like that so try to keep an eye out as best as possible and eventually you'll find them all so once you have finally found them all hand them in to Grigrin which if you remember is literally just west as you reach the second tier so hand them all over to him and at this point if you still have an ads a bunch of red text popping up in your text log we still don't have enough reputation to actually get up to the next tier you can talk to some of the sentinels and they will give you some extra information of things you can do to actually gain more rep such as killing 
uh, werewolf traders or cannabis traders. But you will need like the wolf spine and stuff like that. But that is entirely up to you. The other sentinel is almost directly north of me. Right by there. And he'll give you some more little bits of information to get some more reputation. But if, like me, and you can't be bothered to go and do these things, and I highly recommend not unless you're going for full reputation, we now want to head all the way back over to Maria in jail, and we'll give her some more abuse. So, let's head on over. If you really must feel like saving Maria later on, then you can go kill the cannabis traders and stuff. It's entirely up to you. But once you're over your abuser a few more times, and you'll get a couple more of your reputation points. And as you can see, I've just had the red text saying I can now enter the top tier. At this point you no longer give, need to give any more abuse to Maria, but you can use the angry emote and the laugh emote, wherever it is. I have no idea where it is. And if you've got it, you can also use the trick emote. But, meh. Not really necessary, but it does give you that couple of extra status. So, may as well. But, once you've finished messing around, it's now time to head to the third tier. So, to get to the third tier, remember those stairs I said you're not allowed to go up yet? Well, those are the stairs we can now go up. So, head all the way west, and eventually you'll come to those stairs again. And this time, you can head on up. There's meant to be a sentinel knockin', knock tantine right by here where I was standing, but he wasn't there for me. If he's not there for you, just go ahead and talk to Mischievous Vakan. Which should be right next to the stairs as well. And he'll ask you to entertain him. So, to entertain him, we're going to approach a blood tither, the man walking around all in white, and punch him in the face. So, once you've jabbed him in the eye, go ahead and talk to Mischievous again. And he'll give you some more rep. Go through the door, almost directly west of where Vagan's standing. It's a large room with two coffins in the centre. You can also talk to this sentry right by here and he'll ask you your opinion of Dragon. Just say he should die or anything along those terms. Just tell him you despise Dragon. And you'll gain some more favour. So this is the house you need to go through, and as soon as you enter, you'll end up in a cutscene. And the via watch will ask you if you know anything about it. Say you don't know anything about it. And say you should kill him. He deserves to die. And you'll gain another load of status points. So you'll notice to your south, Vanescular Dragon's there. We don't actually need to talk to her yet. 
and there should be a sentinel nearby. Go ahead and talk to him, and he should ask you about your opinion on Dragon. Just say he deserves to die or something along those lines. And as soon as you finish talking to him, we now need to head to our south. And if you keep going south, you'll eventually come across a jail with a lot of NPCs in. If you go ahead and talk to the guard, and equip your main weapon if you did bring it. And he'll offer to allow you to kill these Maeditch citizens for reputation. So, go ahead and do that, as it's always nice to get more rep. And I think it's around 30 you can kill before you stop gaining reputation. So, just go ahead and whack them all. So for every kill, you will actually gain two reputation, which surprisingly enough will mount up quite quickly. And eventually you'll gain some red text, as you can see there, which will tell you you've now gained passage into the Arboretum for the Blisterwood tree. At this point, you can actually stop killing these if you really feel like it, but, well, you may as well try and get as much rep as possible. As you can see, my name is now changed to Viawatch. So once you've killed all 30 of them, or until they stop giving you reputation, we now need to head over and talk to Vanescula. So if you remember, she was just in the northwestern side of the upper tier, right by there. So ask her how you do that, and then you'll have another little cutscene. So pretty much all you have to do here, you'll be given two choices. All you have to do is repeat almost exactly what she says. So, just say you pledge fealty to the dragon family. And then you devote your service and land and power to the dragon before you. And once you've chosen the right options, she'll end up giving you some kind of curse or something along those lines. And she'll now be in a vampire form, so talk to her and tell her you'll be off to the Aberraton. So if you didn't notice where the Aberraton is, if you head down to the northish corner of this tier, the northeastern, And it'll be just past the bank. And you'll notice this little building here. As soon as you go towards it, one of the NPCs will talk to you. Just say, of course not. And pledge fealty towards him. And you'll then take some damage. And now you can head through the doors into the Arboretum. So head on through. And then through the doors again. And it's time for a few little small puzzles. So as soon as you enter, you want to check health on the tree. And you'll get this little thing, which, for the sake of argument, you don't really need to read as I'll be telling you how to do it. 
So, as soon as you've done that, click the switch on the eastern side of the room. And a bunch of coloured orbs will pop up. So the idea is you want to get the top row all blue, the middle row all yellow, and the bottom row all green. So you move them in sections of four. And they rotate in a clockwise fashion, so pretty much all you've got to do is just move them around until they're all in the right spot. A bit like that. So once you've done that, just pull the switch again and they'll all disappear into the tree. Now all you've got to do is check the tree's health again and you'll get another little cryptic clue or clue of what you're meant to do for the next section. Again, not a worry as I'll be telling you what to do. So go ahead and pull the switch again. And this time another row will be added and all you've got to do is make the top row green, the second row blue, third row yellow and the fourth row green. So, fairly straightforward. And you can do it just like that. The position of the different coloured orbs may be different for each people, but what you need to do is exactly the same. So this may or may not give you a complete guide of how to do it, depending on where your colours are, but meh. Once you've done it right, pull the lever and you just check the health on the tree again. And this time you'll have a little special rule added to it. So, again, there's not much worry as I will be telling you how to do it. So go ahead and pull the switch again. And this time the special rule is, blue cannot touch another blue, green cannot touch another green, but yellow can touch everything. So the idea here is, on the top row you want something like blue, green, blue, green. And then the second row you want all yellow. And finally the third row you want something along the lines of blue, green, blue, green. You can have green, blue, green, blue if you wanted. Doesn't really make much difference. Just make sure the second row is yellow, the fourth row is all yellow, and blue and green are split between each other. So green blue or blue green. So if you don't quite understand what I mean by blue green blue green, if you look at the top row it's just like that. And the third row needs to be the same, or blue-green, blue-green. I'll show you both combinations. And it's just like that. There's all the combinations, so blue-green and green-blue. And as soon as you've done, pull the switch. And we now need to check the health on the tree for the final time. And you'll have another special rule. So again, pull the switch,
And this time is actually a lot easier than the other ones, even though you've got to use everything. But the idea is blue can't touch yellow and yellow can't touch blue. There's multiple ways to do this. But pretty much all you need to do is split the yellow away from blue and in between have green. So you can have it so all the blues are at the top, then there's a layer of green, then there's a, a layer of yellow. Or you can split it like I'm going to do on video now and have all the blue on the right and then all the yellow on the left. And make sure there's a line of green in between them. And it's pretty much as simple as that. So just like that, the green is splitting the yellow and the blue away from each other. And that's all you need to do. So once you've done that, pull the lever. And the tree will now be fully grown. So go ahead and chop down the tree and you'll almost instantly get three logs. And as soon as you've done that, you'll then get a cutscene. And Vanescula's brother will come in, trying to hunt you down as he thinks you're a human. But then Vanescula comes in and saves your ass. So as soon as the cutscene's over you can either keep chopping down the tree, which I highly recommend, to get 200 stakes. Although you can wait and do it a little bit later. But exit and talk to Vanescula. And go through the options. And she'll then charge your dragon's medallion, so you can now teleport straight into Darkmire. She'll then teleport you to the Mayor Ditch hideout. Or to Mayor Ditch, I should say. You then want to use your dragon's medallion to teleport straight to the Mayor Ditch hideout. And once you're in here, head up to the northern side and talk to Vitida and tell them all about what happened. So, as soon as you talk to Vitida, you'll then get thrown into another cutscene. And you can give them whatever answers you want, as far as I know, it doesn't actually matter which you choose. And as soon as the cutscene's over, you then want to talk to Vitida again. And he'll end up handing you a holy bottle of water. So, once you've talked to him, 
you then want to talk to Kale Forshaw and ask him for any information about what you could use and he'll end up giving you two scythes or sickles should say so now we need to fletch our blisterwood weapons so go ahead and fletch your blisterwood log into a blisterwood polearm and then with the final two I'd highly recommend making stakes and if you cut loads earlier I'd highly recommend making them into stakes I'll show you the stats of this polearm, it's not great but they do gain additional damage bonuses versus vampires which does help quite a lot so with the final logs I'd highly recommend making stakes, you can make a staff if you want although personally I did end up using magic and melee on the boss and magic failed big time so I'd highly recommend range which is what the stakes are. But once you finish talking to those two in there, you've got your holy water bottle, your blisterwood polearm and your stakes. You then want to teleport back up to Darkmire. And it's time to prepare for the big ass boss battle. And as you do, you'll actually do one of the hard tasks. So head on into the bank, which should be right next to you. And I'd highly recommend closing the door behind you. As always, if you take off your Viawatch disguise, all of the Viawatch will attack you. And at this point, if you didn't earlier, you can now chop down some more blisterwood logs. Which I'll just show you quickly. Well, I say quickly. There we go. So just simple as that. You can keep cutting down. And I'd highly recommend gearing about 200 plus stakes for the boss battle. But I won't do that on video. But once you've got all 200 stakes. And you're ready to go. Head to the bank and it's time to prepare for the boss. Make sure you shut the door behind you. And this is what you need. You will need your vampire disguise just to get to the boss. You'll need your blisterwood weapons, your bottle of holy water, and I think dragon's medallion is also required for this. But recommended items to take would be the blisterwood polearm, about 200 blisterwood stakes, I'd highly recommend Ganodermic for the magic absorption, as that will help quite a lot. Alternatively, you could bring something like Bandos and Armadil, or simply a Barrow set and Carols. And also, naturally, some Super Restores, some Brews, your Super Extreme or Overload set, and a Beast of Burden packed with Restores and Brews. So make sure you're wearing your Viwatch disguise. And for this example, I am going to be taking Storm of Armadil and a Blisterwood Staff, but as I said, I do highly recommend taking the stakes instead, as Storm of Armadil just did not seem to hit well at all. So a little bit of information on the boss, he mostly uses melee and mage. And he's got quite a few special attacks which I'll go through throughout the boss fight. So I'd highly recommend watching the boss fight before you actually go ahead and do it. But fill up your bob. As you can see on screen now, I'm using three brews to one restore.
and as soon as you've got everything ready it's time to head on inside so to get to the boss panel you just gotta head slightly south and you'll notice a huge building on your eastern side and there'll be a big blood weld within the door I'd highly recommend protect from melee at this point for fighting this first little blood weld as that's all he attacks with so once you're ready head on inside you can now equip your armor and just chuck on protect from melee and kill him so he's pretty easy to be honest it shouldn't take you too long to take out but as soon as he gets down to almost dead you'll notice you'll hardly do any damage to him at that point you want to use your holy water by just clicking throw don't worry you won't lose it you'll just throw a little bit on the blood veld and then you can do more damage and kill him at this point if you've used up any supplies you can actually rebank it's entirely up to you but I will now head straight into the boss so I highly recommend something like turmoil and protect from melee for the first section make sure you equip all your armor and pot up before you enter and as soon as you're ready head on through this next door right by here and you'll have a little chat with Anstrom and then he'll instantly start attacking you so go ahead and attack him and chuck on protect from melee and melee away at him and his life will drop pretty sharp so Vanstrom's actually got a couple of special attacks which you really do need to keep an eye out for you'll notice he's just turned into his vampire form as soon as he turns into this you'll notice you'll start hitting a lot harder with the blister wood so his first attack is darkness you'll say steer into the darkness at that point you want to make sure you turn your character and try to turn your camera away from him as you've seen there he just used his blood attack when he does that he'll teleport you into the center of the room and cast a blood spell underneath you as you can see on screen now he's just spawned two blood welds make sure you attack them they've only got 50 HP if you don't kill them before they reach Vanstrom they will actually heal him so as you notice he's just gone into flight mode at this point you want to chuck on your blister with stakes and deal some damage to him and as you can see he will keep casting blood at you so I'd highly recommend protect from mage at this point and you quite literally never want to stand still for too long so heal up if you've done a lot of damage to you because those spells can hit you for high as hell and then do one attack and then move and one attack and move one attack move and you'll slowly little his life down So the main ones to keep an eye out for are these blood welds. He seems to use this quite a bit. So just take them out before they reach him so he doesn't heal. His blood move can catch you off guard and throw you into the middle of the room. That attack right there was his darkness attack. As soon as he says stay into the darkness make sure you turn away. As you can see, if you're not quite quick enough, he will deal damage to you. That's how you avoid it. Turn your camera and character away from him. And that's pretty much it to this entire fight. His flight mode is definitely the most dangerous. As 
those constant little blood baths, if you don't constantly keep moving, will literally obliterate you. As you can see, the kitten fairly constant 400. Whether that was actually higher and the gamma dermic has helped to knock down the damage, which is most likely, I'm not sure, but I know it can hit really high numbers. That's why I recommended using gamma dermic, as it's got a huge magic absorption boost. So this isn't actually an easy fight, I find this a lot harder than Nomad and the Dunu Evil bosses. It's definitely the hardest boss I've killed so far. But as I said, it's all a matter of keeping an eye out for what attacks he's going to use. And I would highly recommend using the Blisterwood Stakes instead of Mage. A good little tactic is to try and keep your camera angle facing away from where Vanstrom is and be prepared to click away as if he does use his darkness attack that should allow you to avoid it. And throughout the entirety of this second half of the battle protect from magic would probably be a better idea than melee. Although it won't negate all of his damage, it will negate quite a hell of a lot of it. So once you get him down to very low life, he'll eventually turn into a gas cloud. And this is the final form, and also the easiest. So to kill him while he's in this form, move towards the middle of the room and use the holy bottle, and you'll throw water on the ground which will do consistent damage to him. Just keep moving to the side and keep casting the bottle. And eventually you'll take him out. If you're standing next to him while he's in gas form, you will take fairly consistent damage of low numbers. It's only like 50 damage, but still worth keeping an eye out for. So eventually he'll drop, and as he does, he'll spawn loads of high-level blood welds and deal some immense damage to you. As far as I know, you cannot die on this point but if you did bring a ring of life for whatever reason you will now be teleported out hence why I didn't recommend it if you happen to die while doing this fight you'll be spawned while well, your grave will be just outside this building but you will keep your dragon medallion on you on death so all you've simply got to do is teleport up to the Darkmire region 
you'll also have your vampire disguise kept on death automatically and all you've got to do is walk straight here and pick up all your gear so again it's pretty much safe boss battle So for this little section, you'll actually take control of an Escular. And I'd highly recommend constantly using Shriek and Dart. When you use Dart, just click on it and then click in a straight line straight from you. And you'll fly to there and attack everything at once, like that. and Shriek will do damage to everything in the room. You can't actually take any damage while in Vinescular form, so you've got absolutely nothing to worry about there. And as soon as you've killed them, you'll have a nice long cutscene. and you'll then get thrown back into the Maya Ditch base. So all you gotta do is head up and talk to Vatida. and tell him all about what's just happened and then you'll get another cutscene So as soon as the cutscene's over and you finish talking to Vatida, uh, you now want to use your dragon's medallion, and we're heading to Birderot. And we now need to talk to Valaif Hertz. So head to the pub, and down into the basement. And go ahead and talk to the leaf. Tell him about what's happened. And eventually... Quest complete. So, for completing the quest you get 2k uh, two quest points. You'll also get 20k agility, 50k woodcutting, 20k farming, 40k fletching. 20k crafting, 25k slayer, 35k mage XP. You'll also gain 3 tomes of XP worth 50k each, so that's 150k XP. And you can use them in any skill, level 60 and above. You can also now fletch your own blister wood weapons, and you'll also gain full use of the dragon medallion. So a little bit of explanation about the dragon medallion. If you're anywhere within the... Mortania area, so anything past Patadermis pretty much, you get free teleports to any of the areas. If you're anywhere else in the world, it'll cost you one teleport charge. If you ever need to charge it, just head to the basement south of the pub, and you can recharge it in there by using it on the blood pool. So all in all, a pretty good quest. The boss is actually fairly hard, I actually quite enjoyed it. It was actually kind of challenging for a change. And that's the final quest requirement for the hard and elite Mortania tasks. 
So all that's left now is to burn some fire watches. So hopefully tomorrow I'll have the hard and maybe even the elite guides up for the Mortania tasks. I'm not sure about the elite, but we'll see. And I hope you all enjoy. So I'll catch you later.